hi guys welcome back to my channel uh so today's video is going to be a little making video of how i made this little blue-eyed squirrel uh it's for a commission uh so it's already on the way home or already already made it home but um yeah so this customer ordered three different dolls um and this is the first one but um yeah so it's based off a doll that I originally made for a different commission but um, the colour has been changed so it's got a black body obviously with a little bit of grey and uh, the white face with the blue eyes as well so it looks like a completely different doll um, but yeah so it's got a, a wire armature for the arms and it's got a ball and socket armature for the spine um, and uh, yeah good posability something in my eye um, but yeah, so a quick little commission, uh, so if you want to see how I made it, then uh, keep watching. Alrighty, so for this particular order, the customer wanted uh, kind of a similar doll to what I made before, where um, the squirrel had some glass eyes, uh, some blue glass eyes uh, cast inside the resin head. So I have a tutorial over on um, in my shop if you want to know how I cast and clean up all the eye area for resin so basically i go through a the process of how i cast these glass eyes inside of a resin head uh, and the cleanup process involved afterwards so it's in my shop you can check it out if you want to know how i uh, do this process um, and uh, it comes in a little zip folder which you can download a video tutorial to. Anyway, so once that's cleaned up and done, I can start painting all the pieces that need to be painted. So it's usually around the eyes, the nose and the mouth, uh, sometimes the ear area. Um, seeing as this little uh, squirrel is going to have a white face, um, uh, I decided to go with a pink um, undertone to the eye area or the skin area. So I'm basically using a it's a kind of a pastel-y pink color and it's a water-based acrylic paint and uh, it's by the brand Derivian Matisse. I usually use the brand uh, Derivian Matisse and um, uh, what do you call it? Um, Chromacryl. Uh, so those two are pretty cheap um, acrylic paints that you can find pretty much in any craft store. The Chromacryl is mainly only found in Australia because it's Australian made, but you can get something like Liquitex that is very similar as well. I have also used that um, and I've also used uh, golden paints which I don't really like for painting on my um, art dolls. I don't mind the red because um, it's a lot thicker so um, it creates like a streaking effect and it dries a bit differently so not really a fan of using it on resins and stuff. Anyway moving on to the faux fur. So what I'm, gonna, I'm using this particular faux fur that has a black to grey gradient uh, so it's kind of a little bit difficult to cut out these pieces if you want to catch that gradient. Uh, so you end up wasting a little bit of fur, fur to get that gradient but I thought this would work really well with a white face and then the body going from grey to black um, and then back to grey again uh, in the tail so um, I decided to go with this particular gradient which is good. It's got a long pile uh, on the faux fur as you can see. It's pretty wispy. Um, I will end up trimming quite a bit of it but um, it's quite thin if that makes sense so the uh, the pile underneath isn't very thick but it's good quality um, faux fur it's just a different type of uh, pile so what I'm doing is cutting out the patterns that I drawn on the back of it these body patterns are something I've created I have body patterns over on my patreon if you want to have access to some of them I just put up a bongo body pattern that I made where you can um, create your own bongo art doll but for this one I'm using a squirrel type body uh, for this one and cutting it out with a small pair of sharp scissors so when you're cutting faux fur you want to insert the scissors into the pile and just cut the backing of the faux fur that's why I prefer to use a small pair of scissors because I can uh, get it in between the pile of the faux fur and the backing so once that's done I uh, usually end up sewing it on the sewing machine for this one in particular one I did sew it up on the sewing machine so I usually leave the back end open the legs open and also the neck area open so that way I can flip the body the right way around and also insert the armature that I'm going to be using and um, get all of the stuffing inside of it 
The bigger the hole, the more hand sewing you need to do, obviously, but the less stressful it is getting <laughs> that faux fur flipped the right way around. If you're having a little trouble getting it inside out, you can use a small needle nose pliers just to coax the, the rest of the faux fur through. Uh, don't use anything sharp because you will end up making a hole in your faux fur and that you'll have to sew up anyway. So uh, use something blunt like a wooden tool or a plastic tool or something like that with a rounded end, like you can see on the right there. Uh, it's like a little clay tool with a rounded end that I can sort of poke it through. So this is what we've got so far. It looks like a big fluffy mess, but once we get the armature in uh, and all the pieces put together, then we can start sewing things up. So I used a combination of a ball and socket armature and a wire armature. I have videos on my Patreon again if you want to know how I create those and uh, insert all of the pieces. Once I have inserted all the pieces, I can start gluing things up, adding any stuffing and sewing it up. So I use a craft craft fabric glue. It's just a clear tacky fabric glue that works really well for sticking fabrics to plastics. Um, you can find something similar in your local craft store, just always test out things first. But uh, I get mine from Spotlight here in Australia, but um, yeah, I just... Uh, like using this one, it works really well. Just be careful not to add too much uh, uh, glue to your faux fur because sometimes it can leak through and create like a weird little uh, gluey blob spot that comes through. So you get the hang of it the more you do it. But um, I usually leave it dry uh, for a couple of hours at least before I add any tension to it. So once that's done, I can start sewing things up. Now I use a ladder stitch to sew all of my pieces up. I have a ladder stitch video on my channel you can check out. Uh, it's a pretty simple stitch and you want to get yourself a good quality thread as well because uh, it really helps with um, stopping the line from snapping. Once it's sewn up, I can start gluing the pieces together again using that same fabric glue. In the, in the meantime, I can add the polyfill is uh, what I use to stuff my dolls. If it needs a little bit of weight, you can get like beads, um, weighted beads to put in your doll if you want to add weight, stuff like that. Um, and then once that's done and complete, I can start sewing up the back end and adding the tail and just sewing everything up. For some reason, I've lost a lot of footage of um, the rest of the doll. For some reason, I have no idea where it's gone. Uh, so that includes um, adding the faux fur and painting all of the little details and stuff in. But uh, you can check that out on any of my other videos. You know, it's it's um, pretty much the same process. Anyway, so this is the process for making this little doll, a quick little one. Um, I have heaps of things coming up as well, including a big shop update for Flying Foxes. Uh, so keep an eye out on my Instagram and early access on my Patreon. These are some couple of little shots of the Blue-Eyed Squirrel commission that I just did. It turned out really well. Happy, super happy with it and I uh, hope the customer is also happy. Uh, you can check me out on Instagram, Facebook, Creatures of Nat and also my shop at creaturesofnat.com. I have a couple of things in there looking for homes. Uh, and uh, don't forget to subscribe, give it a thumbs up, click the bell thing, all that stuff. Um, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye! Oh,